What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. We made it over here. We're at BNK Performance. You see, we got the aluminum block on the engine stand. That thing's awesome, guys. <laughs> I can't believe the difference in weight. That when I got that, whew, man, I should have I should have got over here at a different time when there was somebody here. That thing has got to be at least 200 pounds, maybe 220 pounds. It is heavy, 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 heavy. That little aluminum block, man, it's super easy to put up there. But I got the the steel went off, thank goodness. So we got some parts and pieces we got to get off of this one to transfer over. But let me show you what we got going on today. Comment, like, and subscribe. Go to turbojohnracing.com to grab yourself some merchandise. Man, I'm excited. All right, guys, we have got, I think we've got everything. I've got a couple little things that I need to order. But for the most part, we got everything to get this thing back together with. Man, that thing is heavy, 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 heavy. So uh, one of the things couple well couple things i guess going back to one of my last videos i showed y'all where i was talking about oiling system danny ray i talked to him some more and he actually told me something that i had no idea um when you have a roller cam bearing that just relies on oil splash these actually do not directly go um down into here to get any oil so it's just splash so what we got to take off of this other motor um we are still going to use the spacer bearings this one is a 400 main just like this one over here. So my crankshaft is still a 350 main. So that's, you know, one of the things, maybe I'll upgrade at some point, change the crankshaft. I mean, this is a little baby stroke, but that's a great crankshaft. So I don't know, maybe I'll call Shaft Tech and see if potentially Shaft Tech, since this thing is already 30 thousandths now, I mean, Shaft Tech may be able to, to weld these journals up and take them to 400 and then machine them back down and re-notchite them. I don't know, that's something I'm going to ask. But for the meantime, we're gonna put it back together exactly like it was. So spacer bearings are coming out of this block. They're going into this block. And then the crankshaft's gonna get in today. Hopefully, I can go ahead and start file fitting the rings as well. Uh, if we can get the rings file fit and uh, assembled, you know, that'll be good too. Uh, I don't know if I'll get the piston slapped in it today, but if we can get some of this stuff done, I think we're gonna be in good shape. All right, guys, let's get to work. All right, guys, so the spacer bearings are in the block here. So these things fit pretty good. Uh, basically, the thrust bearing is, well, all the spacer bearings are a 400 bearing, 10 thousandths undersize. And so you can make these yourself, but they cut the thrust off of it. So basically all it does is just space it out and then your normal thrust bearing goes in here. So the upper bearings, the ones that are in the block, of course, they have to have the groove in it because the oil supply comes from right here. And so, of course, it's going to go on here like this, the tang, and basically this will just pop down right in there. But something we need to do to help the thrust bearing survive, one of the things I do all the time, and I've got a good video on it, I think, on how to make your thrust bearing survive, which clearly mine failed, but it was because my torque converter was too tight, is I cut a groove in the bearing here. And basically what happens is, when you cut the groove here, I'll measure about 50 thousandths and then I'll take a side grinder or a die grinder with a square bit and I'll just notch it. And then that way oil comes up through here, pressurizes this area, and then it goes out the groove. So you get direct oil in through here. Now there are people that will also drill holes here. They'll go in to the block and drill a hole through the thrust bearing and into that. And I've never done that, but there are people that do that. But I'm gonna just notch this. Let me go do that real fast and I'll show you what it looks like when we get done. All right, guys, real simple. Let me show you the tool that we used. This is what we used to initially get it. See how it's a square end. And then I used a hand file to finish. And it turned out pretty good. Let's see if this camera can pick it up. It's not terrible, but basically, it's kind of hard to see, but you see there's a little groove there. And it's about 60 or 70 thousandths wide. I didn't actually mic it, just kind of did it by feel. And it's about probably 15, 20, 30 thousandths deep. Um, very difficult to see it on the camera, but that'll give it just enough oil flow to where it, it helps oil the thrust bearing and it should help it survive longer. 
at least in uh, past engines, it, it worked pretty good. As long as you don't have a big converter failure, just where it takes forever to spool up, kind of like we, we did on mine uh, the last time, which is the reason why we tore the thrust bearing up, is because it was taking too long to spool up. All right, so let's stick this thing in, clean it real fast and stick it in. So guys, one other thing I decided to do, and I did not do this on the other motor because I didn't think it was that far off, but this is the spacer bearing uh, that I had. Look how small that hole is versus what I just did. This is the size of the block. And so that hole was very restrictive. So I don't want necessarily the oil pushing on the backside of this bearing. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's bad or not, honestly. I don't know, it can't be good. <laughs> so I'm drilling the spacer bearings out basically to get more oil to the main bearing. Uh, main bearing uh, that is going in there has got a larger hole like this. Uh, so yeah, that's what, I think that's a good thing. Uh, so we're drilling them out, almost done with it. So if you notice on these bearings, the hole is small, but then it's like wing shaped. So you can see the wing, it actually is bigger than the hole. So that's gonna work out good. So I don't have to do anything to the bearings, the actual bearings. Something you always wanna check also, make sure this is a 30 thousandths, make sure all the bearings are correct because sometimes they package them incorrectly. Not a fan of the spacer bearings. Uh, people have been doing it forever. Um, you know, this motor has been together for two years and I haven't had an issue out of it, but not particularly a fan, but it is what it is. All right guys, so making progress here. So one thing I just wanted to point out to you guys, always check the bearings to make sure that they are the right one. So every single one I pull out of the package, I make sure it's all over 30. Now for a small block Chevrolet, I didn't talk about it a minute ago. See the remaining seal is already in there. You can slide that thing in after the fact, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, so I'm just reusing this one. Now this is a 400 million block. So the part number of the remaining seal you need is a 2909. If you get a 350, regular 400 uh, block, that seal is gonna leak and it's gonna leak bad. Been there, done that, ask me how I know. Um, so the bearings in there, I just use regular old Lucas to, uh, for the engine assembly lube, it's freaking awesome. But always make sure, these caps are numbered and they've got an arrow, but you always wanna make sure when you're putting this thing together, just pay attention and you'll notice the tangs are on that side and the tangs are on this side. So tang to tang, that's the same way in the rod bearings and the mains. Um, that way it keeps it from spinning. Tang to tang, always remember that. All right, guys, we're getting closer. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, uh, just lightly torqued everything down. I've run everything in with the impact to about 15, 20 foot pounds, and then make sure the crankshaft is easy to turn. So several times you notice I'll grab the snout of the crankshaft or the counterweight and try to move this thing. And the reason you would do it periodically, um, preferably after every time you tighten one down uh, initially is so that if you got a bent crankshaft, it'll show you which journal is bent, where it's actually bent at. So this thing is smooth as butter right now. 
Uh, we're in our first torch specs. I did everything to 50. Uh, the inside ones here, they end up going to 75 uh, foot pounds. The outside ones are 65 foot pounds. And these little teeny ones are 30. So we're gonna do final torque on these real fast. Uh, and then we'll be good to go. I also don't know if you noticed, um, when I was putting this on, I put a dab of silicone on the cap on both sides and on the rear main seal, just in the, the area. And I offset it just a little bit when I popped it down on there. And then that way, uh, this thing should hopefully seal up back there. So we'll see how it works out. But it's one of those things, uh, a leak back there is always a problem. There ain't nothing worse than getting it in the car and, and it leaking on you. Uh, thrust is about 10 thousandths. Um, so that's about where I like it. Um, a lot of people like it a lot uh, tighter than that. And right now I was checking it uh, when, when it was dry and uh, it seemed like it was fine. And so now, I mean, I've got everything lubed up so you're not gonna be able to move it by hand, but it does have plenty of thrust and it's got some good drag on it. Uh, it's, not, it's not super easy, but there again, it's because of the Lucas. The Lucas is so thin once that stuff wears out and it gets regular oil in it, this thing will spin super, super easy with no drag at all. So it's coming together, I'm liking it. All right, guys, well, that is going to wrap it up for today. Uh, all in all, I'm very happy with the progress we made. We got the crank in it. My plan was to go ahead and file fit the rings, but that's just not going to happen today. Uh, it's time consuming putting these things together. So uh, this is our stopping point for today. So tomorrow, uh, get back over here and file fit the rings. And then uh, basically, I mean, the pistons are already on the rod, so I ain't got to do anything with that. Once I file fit the rings, uh, essentially just put the bearings on the on the rods and then snap it all together all right guys comment like and subscribe see y'all soon later